Hi, Steph Nelly here. Today, we have the pleasure of chatting with Dr. Sanjay Manahar, who is a professor in neurology here at University of Oxford. Sanjay's research focuses on understanding how our motivation to be attentive and accurate is impacted by dopamine, a neurotransmitter that's affected by drugs, Parkinson's disease, and frontal lobe damage. Today, we're gonna to learn a little bit more about his trajectory. So, hey Sanjay, to start things off, would you mind maybe telling us a bit about where you grew up? Yeah, sure. So, uh, my parents came to England from, from Madras, which is uh, it's now known as Chennai in South India, and around, they came around the time I was born. Uh, they were both doctors and they were posted up in Newcastle on Tyne. So, I used to actually have a really strong Geordie accent previously, and uh, and like the sort of stereotype, I grew up always wanting to be a doctor. And so when I got to medical school, I realized that that was not right. And I was completely disillusioned by it all. It was really boring. You know, I had to learn lists of names of bones and muscles. And But the good thing was we were lucky enough to have some really incredible lecturers, um, uh, fantastic tutors at Cambridge, including like Trevor Robbins and Barry Everett, Angela Roberts and psychology. And in physiology, we had uh, seminars by Horace Barlow, David Tolhurst, and my tutor at the time was Roger Carpenter. And so he's a, he's a very pure physiologist and some people even characterize him as an anti-psychologist. So he used to say in a kind of derogatory way that psychology is basically cheap philosophy. And so when I told him I was interested in attention because of all the other lectures I'd heard, used to snort and say, attention, is that just a dirty word for motor plans and things? So we had lots of arguments and the arguments that followed got me hooked. And I think the you know, arguments are the root of science. So that's how I got interested in it. I did my part two psychology and physiology in, 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 in Cambridge too on that. Very interesting. So that kind of describes how you got interested in psychology in the first place. Um, based on that, is there like some advice that maybe you picked up along the way that you'd like to share with us in terms of kind of finding your, your path? Yeah, so um, it, I carried on with my clinicals, I guess, after, um, after getting interested in all this. And even though I knew at that stage I didn't want to be a full-time clinician, it's so hard to get out of that, especially once you start working in a hospital environment. There's a huge inertia to overcome to change your career once you're embedded in it and so you know i was really captivated by john driver's studies on attention and i contacted him directly and i sort of told him what was wrong with his work and told him an idea for an experiment and he liked it and asked me to come and do a project with him and then he introduced me to masood and that there i was you know that's how i got out of being a full-time clinician and starting to do the things that i'd really dreamed of doing. And I think one piece of advice that I might give to people is, so in science, you, at least for me, I often have an idea and then very shortly afterwards, I'll find that it's not new and loads of people have said the same thing already. And every time I think of a new idea, I find that it's old. So uh, someone told me, whenever you find yourself stuck without a new idea, to try and take a step back, and think back to the big picture and why you got interested in this in the first place. What are the major unanswered questions in your field or in other people's fields and how, how your work fits in. And as a junior researcher, I found it really hard to take a step back and see the, the perspective. But I say, if you take a little time every day to just think about the broad philosophical or structural questions, then um, I think taking that step back keeps you moving forwards. That would be my piece of advice. That's awesome. Do you have maybe like, what kind of motivates you in those moments when you're a little bit down, realizing that this exciting projects maybe didn't been done before and you have to take a step back? What keeps you going? Yeah, so for me, it's, it's something very concrete, actually. It's that, um, so I've always had a passion for programming computers, right? So for, as a child, I used to, I got hooked on it and it's quite an addictive thing. But at that stage, I, I realized that, you know, presumably what's going on in my head is somehow like that. And I will know that the problem has been solved once we have a computer program that can do what I'm doing now. And until we 
get to that point, I'm not going to give up on, on solving this problem. And I think there are loads of ways of tackling it. Right? So you can tackle it like me doing a sort of biological route, or you can be a computational neuroscientist or a philosopher, I guess, is tackling the same problem in a way. But um, that, that's what keeps me going, is that the, the drive to understand these sort of very fundamental questions. Perfect. Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Sanjay. Welcome.